Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, November the 11th. I'm Eric Wilkinson. I want to say thank you to all you men and women who have served our country. I appreciate it to the bottom of my heart. I have family members that have served as well and I know that is a great sacrifice. So let me tell you I truly appreciate it. A um, couple of things about me. Uh, I used to do a lot of on-air mainstream media where I talk about economic and geopolitical environments, how that impacts markets with my market analysis. And I'm going to do the same thing for you folks out there, but I'm going to layer on it some option strategies that I find on any given day based on those assumptions that we come up with. Uh, and I have some streamlined processes for you all out there so you don't have the guesswork. Where's the strike location? How many days to expiration should I use? Well, we have that drilled down for you. So you follow the roadmap and it'll find the right strategy for you all the way down to the right strike locations. All right, so please check those out at protraderstrategies.com. And without further ado, let's get on with that economic data. Well, not so fast, right? Well, we just talked about it being a holiday here in the United States. It is a bank holiday, lighter than normal volumes most likely throughout the day. And across the pond, we really didn't get any economic data uh, there to, to guide us. So really, we are still trading on the Pfizer effect. And the Pfizer effect is the fact that they came out and said that they had a vaccine that would um, had a 90% uh, efficacy rate. So with that being said, some of the markets been uh, doing well in this. That's the reopen trade and the stay at home trade has not been doing so well recently. We've seen the Dow rally the NASDAQ stall. Well, we're seeing a little bit of that rotation back in because people are starting to realize just what I said earlier on with all of this at the jump is that yes, that is a great thing, but we aren't going to see this for at least six months. And in six months, not everybody's going to be able to get this. So it could be overhanging for quite some time. Plus, we are looking at another round of lockdowns here in the United States and across the pond, which could slow the economy even further. Uh, well, we don't have that stimulus tech check right now to help drive that market, create that velocity of money that I've talked about so much with the last uh, stimulus check. So we are in a bit of a flux right now. The markets are rallying, but does that signal that we might have a little bit of a correction imminent? Well, we'll talk about that when we start digging into the charts. All right, crude oil, still up in that 40s, but it looks like, you know, we're starting to see this resistance up at, you know, $45 a barrel right now in this type of economy is just asinine to me. And we are starting to see this market slow down. Maybe a bit of a top. I don't have a position in here. I haven't added anything. It just does not seem like it wants to go anywhere. It sounds like I just got my Coca-Cola. Um, so the overall market here, I think is a little bit overdone to the upside. We should be trading in a pretty tight range here. I haven't found anything to do with this just because there's super low volatility and it's stuck in a range, which makes it very difficult to find a strategy to fit that nicely. Um, then we go over to gold futures. Gold futures starting to lose a little momentum here. Again, I think that gold is probably a little overdone to the downside. If we get another round of stimulus, that should give gold some movement or some momentum to the upside because that would be a weakening dollar. And with the type of package Democrats getting into office is supposed to be much bigger than what Trump was uh, trying to get across the finish line there, well, that means a weakening of the dollar even further if we're starting to print that much uh, cash. So I would say that gold is due for a bounce. I'm not getting involved in this right now. I'm going to wait till this all sorts itself out because we could really press the thumb screws on the longs here and really push down, maybe even test that 1800 handle, even the 18 even. You know, I've talked about this being support right around 1850. We break through that and that 1800 handle is sure to be tested um, in the near future. But with that being said, I think, you know, I would lean towards uh, the upside in gold, but I'm not going to throw anything on at this point. All right, bonds. Bonds, I've talked about this. I think they're overdone to the downside, although we are starting to see this consistent lower highs, lower lows. We did break that lower high right here, created a higher high 
market sloughed that off and created a lower low here. Now we're outside. We're getting a little overextended to the, you know, I've already thought we are extended, but now we're really overextended being outside the value area low. Now that's, you know, where we see a lot of people start to really panic and maybe pop out of these where they expected some support right around there at the 172 handle here in the bonds. We're two points below that. That's got to get some people really starting to worry a little bit. So when there's blood in the water, it's time to go fishing in my eyes. And I think that the market is well overdone to the downside. Um, how, how sure of that conviction am I? Well, let's just say I did this trade super small. Uh, that's how, convic how much conviction I have in this trade. But I wanted to put my money where my mouth is. I've been talking about this bit of a bounce uh, here in the market. So I wanted to get my feet in the water and take advantage of my assumption. So with that being said, we've got really low implied volatility for TLT, which is the ETF. So we talk about that with it being a basket of goods and what our implied volatility percent should be. Well, let's just say here in TLT, it's right around 9%. So super low. What does that lean us towards? Buying options, right? And if we're buying options, we want to limit that theta decay. If we limit that theta decay, we got to go out in time. So that's exactly what I've done here, following along with those guidelines. I did get a little bit tighter to the market. Usually I talk about a 36 delta. I think my delta was right around 40 when I did it. And um, I went into the TLT and bought the uh, February contracts. Well, went into the February long durations, bought the 158 calls for uh, $3 and 30 cents in that, uh, for the TLT trade there. I wanna make sure I got that correct there uh, on my strike location. I'm shooting from the hip there, sorry people. Uh, but the, yes, it was the 158s and I paid $3 and 33 cents for it. Like I said, super small, teeny. All right, so gives me some upside exposure in TLT, which I think we could still see the markets rally and lower interest rates. I think that's probably good. Right now, if you think that interest rates are going to go higher, you should be really considering looking at the banking sector because they will do much better. They're doing all right. They're making money with these lower interest rates. But as interest rates start to expand, you know, they get to collect more of a basis on these different types of uh, loaning products that they are, uh, you know, mortgages, car loans, stuff like that. They get a bit more of a VIG there. All right, VIG, VIX. We are seeing VIX come off again today. That's because we're starting to see some momentum move to the upside here. We've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 79 points. Like I said, the blue chips are still doing pretty good as I think people are looking at taking some of that money off the table that they've done so well with in the tech sector. And the tech sector being a stay-at-home type trade, uh, a lot of people looking for that opening up type trade. Uh, is going to give the Dow Jones a bit of a boost to the upside. You can see here NASDAQ finally finding their legs uh, and up 200 points on the day after yesterday being down. Coming down though, something to note, as a lot of people were talking about, came down and tested the 50-day simple moving average and found support on that. That is a, uh, a win for the bulls. And now we're starting to get a bit of a tracement back to the upside. Now, Something I was looking at earlier is that it kind of, it's a bit of a messy pattern here with a head and shoulders, maybe a cup and handle, the cup and handle is broken here. But I was talking about with, I think the equities are going to see is a bit of a rollover here and it'll probably show up a little bit easier on the E-mini S&Ps, but a bit of a rollover here before we start extending to the upside. You can see that that really old trend channel that I had, and it's a tight trend channel, but it is, kind of capturing this whole move where we're finding that resistance over that old trend channel from way back in the day. And here's what we're talking about with the uh, E-mini S&Ps. It's a bit of a sloppy chart too. You could Some people could say that the head and shoulders already happened, but one could also say this is the big part of a shoulder, a head move, and then we get another shoulder breaking in coming back down to test this 200 day or sorry 50 day simple moving average maybe the point of control one would call it but rolling over just a little bit here before we start uh, moving to the upside but in the meantime on the flip side of that uh, you know thought process for the trade there is we're also 
getting these counter opposing dojis, which is a continuation pattern uh, for the market. So, you know, we got this doji, uh, this one here, and then, you know, this one here. All of those very uh, convoluted and kind of leans towards the upside. Now, yesterday with the uh, red candle, I talked about that. We get a red candle there yesterday, finished towards those lows. It was going to look like confirmation of that theory I just talked about where we're kind of getting those pops, maybe a little bit of a rollover. Market kind of bunking that off today, not getting any, um, any confirmation for a correction at this point in time. So it looks like this market wants to trudge just a little bit higher. Uh, yesterday, when I was looking at the charts, I was pretty sure this market was going to start rolling over a little bit here. Um, but today, making some moves to the upside on lighter than normal volume because we have the banks closed, there's going to be a lot of uh, lighter than normal volume happening today then. So, E-mini S&Ps, yesterday <laughs> I talked about a pretty boring day, very tight range. Nothing to see there. Again, seeing the same thing, very tight range. And I would expect us to kind of hold off in that kind of range. And I don't think we're going to see a major breakout to the upside or the downside as the banks are closed and lighter than volume. You can see our volume's very light here today. Even for an opening, it's very light. Uh, so I think we're going to kind of trend a little bit side, sideways here. But with that all being said, the trade that I put on, that TLT trade, the trade that I've taken off is this uh, Coca-Cola trade. I decided to, you know, uh, roll out of this for a nice profit. Like I've talked about, lowering the cost basis. We've already beaten that, that drum. We've lowered our cost basis down quite dramatically since uh, the pandemic began. That's when I got into this trade. I sold some 53 puts in there, collected a credit got that stock put to me. Well, I have battled it out throughout this time, selling calls, selling puts, selling strangles around this underlying that I'm long at 53, trying to stay mechanical, lowering that overall cost basis, staying into the game, right? Well, we've gotten that bust out to the upside, trading into the 54 handle. That's the time to get out of this uh, trade in my eyes anyway. So I went out there and covered my um, Coca-Cola trade at $54 and I think it was 24 cents. Um, let me just double check the 54.25. So I'm out at 54.25. Remember I bought it at 53, but I've lowered my overall cost basis. And I, I drilled down on all that earlier on in the week with my daily market commentaries on how we've traded this Coca-Cola uh, like a um, I mean, like you write in a book, to be honest. So uh, wanted to get out of that trade. And like I said, uh, that was the trade I got hit on during this. You heard the, the ding happen and um, trading right in and around there. But added TLT to the upside, covered my Coca-Cola, still in the IBM. Uh, if you remember in the IBM, I'm long at 120. It's trading around 117, but I have covered calls in there uh, at the 120 handle. I haven't done anything there. I did take off these short puts that I had in IBM. But um, all of those things being equal, uh, still in all my other trades and nothing really looking too dire to cover at this point in time. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we're an educational company. I'm not trying to solicit you guys to do any of the trades that I'm doing. We're just trying to inform you how to put on options strategies according to your assumptions. All right, so that's all I got. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy.